camera, sorry. Hmm. Hello everybody, welcome to the Braid and Tinker podcast. My name is Melanie and this is a video cast mainly about the things that I knit. Um, it's Sunday, what day is it today? 25th of August and I'm going back to work tomorrow. I had a little holiday of about three weeks, um, which you will know if you've been watching this channel, I put up some vlog videos of stuff that I've been doing. Um, I did find them like remarkably a lot of work. <laughs> so I've, I've kind of stopped uh, recording those, but here is another podcast, um, sort of back to our regular scheduling. So um, that should be good, I think. Um, it's really warm today. It is about 26 degrees Celsius at the moment. It's not even 12 o'clock yet, so it will get warmer. Um, so I need to get into my first finished object quickly so that I can take it off. And that is this thing. This is the Angel Face Turban by Poison Girls Knits, I think. Yes, well, the designer is called Amy Appel and she uses the brand Poison Girls. Um, I knit most of this when we were in um, on holiday in France. Um, and then I had like just the little um, windy bits to do at the end and of course like the last 10% of any project always takes the longest so yeah there we are I really really like it because I've been sort of into the vintage style stuff I'm not sure that I would wear this outside of the house though I'm not sure I'm brave enough for that but I do really really like it um it's actually quite comfortable i usually like things don't usually stay on my head for some reason i think it's because the back of my head is quite flat and then like if you put things over it they don't kind of hug up against the back of your head mine just like slide back off um so yeah but for some reason this stays quite well i am imagining that for autumn this would be a great sort of like walking outside thing it's not too like hot but it does cover your ears and yeah i'd like uh i wouldn't wear this in the dead of winter i think it wouldn't be warm enough but for autumn i think this would be quite nice i like pair because i have these like vintage style sunglasses i quite like I quite like this um but yeah we'll see if i'm brave enough to wear this outside actually i don't think so but i do really like this knit i knit this out of a skein of halloween yarn that i dyed up last year called delightfully tragic and it used up less than 50 grams of that ball so i i can definitely squeeze out a pair of socks with the remainder of that uh albeit short socks or i could use like a, a pair it with a mini and um yeah for heels toes and cuffs and then make regular ish uh size socks but i really love this color and so the pattern is like these little heart shaped holes on the side and then there's like at the back i can take it off actually and show you bits that you can tie it at the front and they have um some pearl rows going in between i really like that look um and then there's at the back it has these um what's this called sort of pleats that's what she calls it in the pattern they're pleats and i'm imagining that you could even if you have like a low ponytail you could probably wear it like this as well which makes it maybe even more vintagey looking you could have like i actually quite like it like this as well but this would work better if you have like a low ponytail i think 
and for some reason it doesn't like to stay on my head as well as it did the other way around but anyway um really enjoyed this knit it's been um it's very different to what I usually knit so sometimes that's just fun to knit something that is super out of your comfort zone and um yeah I quite like this I might you know there's like tons of people who I think this would look great on um but would probably never knit one for themselves so I don't know I might knit some more for other people and like if enough people have one maybe they will wear it and I will not feel as silly wearing it on the street I don't know and it's not that I think it looks silly it's thing I think it looks unusual and then I'm just really self-conscious and I don't want to attract attention to myself which is hard because I'm a tall person I'm a tall Dutch girl and um I just like being in the universe is attracting attention which is quite annoying um for an introvert who doesn't really like that but then wearing something that is out of like unusual <sighs> oh well really like this knit recommend 10 out of 10 love this fun super fun you do need um i would say a row counter I love my row counter anyway, regardless. I use my row counter for everything because some people say you should learn to read your knitting. And I agree to that to some extent, but I really love my row counter. Um, so yeah, I have them lying all over the house because I need them for different projects. Great knit. Okay, so that was my first finished object. I have another finished object, but I haven't woven in the ends um, because, but this is the flax light sweater that I knit for my son. It's not a true flax light because I did something different with the sleeves. I just put like a little patch of um, pearl rose at the top and then stop doing that for the rest of the sleeve um, but I really like how that sort of turns out it gives it a little bit of a military look um, I could definitely see this in like a dark green or something this was knit out of drops flora and I have to say I'm really pleasantly surprised by that yarn I think I have some left in there which we'll get to um yeah drops flora um i really like this yarn it's it's got do, 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 do. what's it got i just want to give oh here we go it's 65 percent wool 35 percent alpaca and you could totally use this for color work it's like um I don't it's like uns what's the like the opposite word of smooth not smooth it's not smooth <laughs> therefore it's perfect for color work but at the same time it is soft you could like I don't know it's a nice I would like a sweater out of this actually uh, a couple of sweaters I would like out of this um but yeah really really like how this turned out um i love the tin can knits patterns i did use some extra short row shaping in the back to sort of raise the neckline because if you just do um no short row shaping in the back you have that the neckline is like super low which is extremely uncomfortable i find in winter time when you're cold you don't want like an like a bare neck so that's i did that but otherwise, this fits perfectly on my side. He has fit it. This has been fitted and blocked. I just haven't woven in the ends and haven't removed. I always leave in these, um, when you, uh, blah. Okay, so when you split for the sleeves, you put the stitches, the sleeve stitches on a holder. Uh, I just use some 
a scrap yarn for that. Um, and I always leave that in when I'm picking the stitches up to knit the sleeves because it's way easier to match up the lines for the sleeves and then make sure that they are of equal length. So tip for you. I think that was in the Winterfjell sweater pattern by Ellie from Skeindir Knits as a tip. And I've just been using that for all my raglan style sweaters where you split for the sleeves. So love that, love this. I, th I have two balls left. I uh, used three balls for this and then the last one was not so two and a half balls and this was the oh what size I think four to six could be wrong I should have looked that up beforehand but anyway my son has just turned four but he is a tall boy so yeah Dutch people this is the thing though, like Dutch people know that if you're buying clothes from any other country, you have to like add sizes because we're just taller than most. Um, although I think like I've been to Montenegro um, and people there are probably taller than Dutch people, but because it's such a small country, I mean the Netherlands is a small country, but Montenegro is much, much smaller. Um, I just don't think it really registers on people's radar, but people are really tall there as well. And tan. Anyway, tangent. Um, so those were my two finished objects, the flax light and the, the turban. And then I've been knitting on my Populux cardigan a lot. Uh, just hope this doesn't fall out. Ooh. And I am very, very close to finishing this. I have one sleeve finished, working on the other. I did most of this last night. And then after that, I need to do the neck band and the, the button band. And then it will be finished. I'm super excited about it because this is will be fine for um, like autumn. At the beginning of autumn but i think this is not a winter cardigan so this will not get a lot of wear this winter i think but i it's so pretty and i love the sleeves for the sleeves you do um some short row shaping here and then you knit the sleeve and it just looks and fits let me just fit this for you put my notes away so I have noticed it's a bit tight on me but I just love how this sleeve is it's also a bit see-through so probably don't wear a black t-shirt underneath underneath this but this is so perfect I love it I've never knit a sleeve like that with the short row shaping so I found it very very enjoyable to uh, learn something new. I love everything about this cardigan. It's like pretty and airy and I love like the pink ballerina color and the speckles and the fancy bits. And I don't know, I just love everything about this. Um, the yarn is by Mr. B's Yarn from Bird Street UK and the colourway is called Leg Warmers and the pattern is the Populux Cardigan by Andy Satterland and it is actually a DK weight um, cardigan but I'm knitting it out of fingering weight on the same at the same gauge uh, just to make it a little bit of a more light airy cardigan and I copied this idea from Amy from the Little Tailoress podcast this was not my idea so I am a big fat copycat um, I've, I've used two skeins of 
the yarn. I'm, I've just broken into the third skein, um, but I will have so much of this left. So I definitely can knit a pair of socks out of this when I'm finished with the cardigan. So always a bonus. But yeah, then, so you can comfortably use three skeins of fingering weight. Um, and I'm knitting the size extra large, I think, and it goes up quite a few sizes. So uh, if you're anything small, like extra large or smaller, you can comfortably use three skeins, probably two, if you're like a smaller or medium. So let's just put this here. And so I have um, one of my sisters, Kaiser, I have many, uh, is pregnant and she's almost due with a little girl. And I thought I would cast on some baby knits. Uh, and this is the Petit Bloomers pattern um, by Karen Burrell. Uh, and her Instagram handle is Umi Knits double o m i e knits um she also has the pillia sock pattern which is a simple sock with a color work uh, image of a pillia pancake plant on the sides and i really really want to knit those socks because i love those plants so anyway digressing this is the bloomers pattern and it has these really cute lace style pattern. And I think I did it wrong. I think you're supposed to do another row in between. Uh, the... To me, these look like apple seeds. So in between the apple seeds, you're supposed to do an extra row of uh, regular uh, knitting. But I didn't use my row counter for this project. And you can see that's when stuff goes wrong. So I'm using, here we go, I'm using Quince and Company um, Finch, that's, this is the uh, Goldfinch colorway, that's the yellow yarn, and turn in the Wheeler Bay color yarn. And the, so the Wheeler Bay is the, this color, <laughs> turquoise. Is this turquoise? It doesn't matter. It's this color. And the, uh, the goldfinch is this yellow color. It's kind of like a citrine in real life. I really like this combination. I think it's cute. So this pattern needs uh, legs and then it'll have some straps at the top to hold it but it also the pattern also gives you the option of knitting an i-cord and looping making um yarn overs in your ribbing and then looping it through so you can like tighten it with an i-cord which is also a very cute option and probably i would do that next time um but yeah loops it is for this one my last whip is a pair of socks because I had a couple of train trips this week going to my sister in Rotterdam and to my parents in The Hague and you need to take a train trip and I usually give my phone to my son so that he can watch cartoons and not bother other people in the train and then I bring some knitting. So I'm knitting these super autumnal socks and this little stitch marker my mum gave me which is so cute because it makes these socks super super autumny. This is Lion Brand Yarn Sock Ease and it's the toffee colour. I bought the, this yarn in Canada last year and I just love it. It's so autumn and I put it in my little autumn sock bag. Um, 
and this is from Bertie and Poppet. And I put on a little Doodle Cats pin, Halloween pin. So I love autumn stuff. So I've been doing like watching Harry Potter at night. Also, this is because Derek isn't here. He's in Canada at the moment, um, visiting his mum. And so I've been putting on Harry, because he doesn't want to watch that because it takes a long time to get through one of those movies and I don't really care. So I've just been watching Harry Potter, drinking like hot herbal tea, knitting all my autumn socks, lighting a little candle or we have like a ton of beeswax because we have the bees and then they leave wax. And sometimes when it's new wax, you can use it for like making lotion bars or that kind of stuff. But the bees reuse their wax sometimes and actually most of the time. And it sort of like, they build with it and then they like gnaw it or something and then I don't know I don't know bees do something with the wax they sort of recycle their wax which makes sense because why would you throw out perfectly good wax anyway after a long time the wax gets darker and darker and it kind of smells smokier and smokier and um, you if it gets like really really dark you need to remove it for them so that they can make new wax I think I see I don't know enough about bees to be telling you any of this but anyway so we have some bags of like the old crappy wax that's like that they've been using for a long time but you can put it in if you have like um one of those burners for wax melts so you it's like a burner you put like a little tiny candle underneath and then it burns whatever is at the top and then you can put the beeswax on top it smells so good it's amazing <laughs> and like the house smells of beeswax this like smoky beeswax so good anyway been doing that and i've been to totally into this autumn vibe and and then the sun comes out and it's like bloody hot <laughs> You know what I really want? I want it to rain and I want it to be cold so I can start wearing my knitted sweaters. And so I had this feeling and then this morning again, like, oh, I really want to wear that one sweater. I can't because it's like impossible. It's too hot, no way. But I thought I'll just pull them out just to show you guys because I knit these last year and you probably, if you've been watching the podcast, you know these, but I just thought it'd be fun to show show you again so this is my Winterfjell sweater jumper I know this is a contested topic um, and most of it is knit out of uh, Rauma Finugan except for the burnt orange that is Tuku wool from a Finnish it's finished yarn um Rauma is Norwegian yarn I believe um yeah I love 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 this sweater every time I wear it I just want to knit more color work sweaters but it is so warm just like holding it right now is making me break into a sweat it's too much it's really too much also Rauma is not really soft it's very kind of prickly um it has to be very cold or and if it's not I need to wear something underneath to protect me from the prickle but um I do really really like this sweater I added um so the short row shaping in the back here is actually in the pattern but I added short rows at the bottom as well so that it covers my bum a little bit better and I cycle a lot and then when you're on your bicycle you're a little bit forward and then your jumpers always ride up and so this is like a little Dutch adding for sweaters to make sure that your back is covered when you're cycling. I really like just holding this and looking at it makes me want to knit another colorwork sweater. I'm just thinking, do I really want to have another prickly sweater? Or 
should I just knit it out of the drop flora? It'll be a little bit of a lighter fabric, I think, um, and softer. So I think I might actually do that. I'm not sure if I would knit this pattern again, although one, I do really like it and I find it elegant. I would definitely use different colors though. So it wouldn't be this gray. Um, and I don't think I would wear the uh, use a bright pink again. I really wish I'd used a yellow or a gold or something for this, but um, I guess I was in a very pink mood when I cast this on. I remember that <laughs> doing these things, the color work section is so fast. You kind of, cause it's like, it's like addictive, right? You're like, oh, I want another row and another row and I want to see the pattern emerge. And then you have it and it's, it's finished and you've, it's just literally taken you a week just to do this, all of this. And then you split for the sleeves and then it's like 600 years of knit stitches. And then you finally finish that and then you have to do the sleeves, oh no. Um, but yeah, I still really, really like this. Amazing sweater. The pattern is a Winterfjell sweater and it's by Ellie from Skandir Knits. And my other like super one to wear all the time but is way too hot um, is this cardigan. This is, I used, um, this is a lopy fluffy thing. You can tell how extremely fluffy this is. This, I knit the Arboreal, Arbor, Ar I don't know, Arboreal sweater by Jennifer Steingas and then I steaked it and turned it into a cardigan and it is really a coat <laughs> and I added a pocket because I need one pocket for my phone um, because when I'm at work I like to take my phone into the cafeteria for lunch. Um, and I don't want to hold it or put it in my pants because I'm a woman and uh, jeans with phone sized pockets are like impossible to find. I also, I never actually knit cuffs for this. This is just like a rolled thing. I think I was planning on knitting cuffs at some point and I might actually do that because I think it will be, one, it will probably look a little bit nicer and it'll be a little bit warmer I mean, I don't want to think about the word warm at the moment because I am, I feel like I'm in a glass, a greenhouse, but anyway. Um, after I blocked this, the neckline had grown quite substantially and um, there was no short row shaping in the back. I didn't think about it and it was very low on my neck. So a big part of my neck was cold. So after about a week or two, I decided to pick up the stitches for the neck. It, there was like a very tiny neck band and you can totally see this, but I wasn't bothered enough to do anything about it. I totally picked up stitches for the neck band and then just added sort of like short row shaping, a short row shaped neck band and then you get like a long bit covering the back of your neck. So yeah, I love it so much, um, but it is definitely a coat instead of a cardigan. The Lopi yarn is so dense and this thing is so heavy. I mean, this is already a heavy sweater, but this is way heavier, it's insane. Um, but it is really nice. Super cold days. This is, I'm wearing this. This is fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's really fluffy and warm. I do find that the the lighter color yarn is way fluffier and softer, and that the burnt orange color is it's kind of crispy. And I don't know if that is because when you're doing the color work the strands are in your hands way more and you're working your way through the yarn a lot more and it's just just gets softer 
or if that's just the nature of the white one is softer than the orange one I have no idea but yeah love this pattern love this thing totally recommend adding pockets to garments it was the easiest thing ever and it's um yeah increased the usefulness of this cardigan by a million so so super amazing so let's talk about the sold dot now i was talking about this in my last episode and i do want to knit a soldotna crop except that i don't want it cropped and i want long sleeves because i've seen a picture by fru valborg a swedish uh, indie dyer who had knit herself an autumn colored uh soldotna crop with longer sleeves and a longer body bo longer body and it looked really really nice so i thought i'll do that also, it uses quite a bit of colour work and I have so much fingering weight coloured skeins of sock yarn um, that I can, you know, it's great because then I can dip into my stash and use up some yarn and because I'm going to a knitting festival in Norway in a couple of weeks and then I have some more space in the stash to buy new things. It's, it's not a, a thing of I need to finish this because otherwise I feel guilty about having all this yarn. It's more of a sense of logistics. I do not have a ton of space to store my yarn. So yeah, I need um, more space. And if I have uh, more space, it's better for storage. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I mean, it is also nice to just knit up some of your stash, right? It makes you feel good. So um in the end i have decided oh yeah i have a couple of problems with the soldotma one it's a dk dk weight sweater pattern uh and i have zero dk weight in my stash i have a lot of fingering weight in my stash but luckily you can just hold a fingering or four ply weight yarn double and it becomes dk DK literally stands for double knit. Um, so no problems, hold it double, it's fine. If you're having like a pattern where you're doing color work with like four colors, I can imagine the yarn management gets a little. But I've seen people in Ravelry who said they've knitted the sweater out of fingering weight, holding it double. Um, so I'm just assuming it's totally possible and I will be doing that because I have fingering weight yarn that I need to get rid of. So uh, I've chosen these colours. This is um, Lagoon Mist. This is by Gamer Crafting, um, who is Angie. She lives in the UK and this is an orange skein that I knit up, uh, dyed up last year. And do do do. This is some cottage merino from Walk Collection, and it is called Twister. And I think these colours would look super great together. And then I am going to use the leftover yarn from my son's Soldotna, uh, my son's Flax Light, because this is what I'm going to use for the body um, and the sleeves. I'm using this because it's super easy to order more of this and it's not expensive. Um, so I'm going to use fancy coloured yarn for the um what's the thing the the yoke and then cheaper yarn for uh sleeves and body and i think that's just the way it's gonna go i think it'll look really really nice together and very autumnal and stuff i'm not going to cast this on right now i am going to wait until I finished my Populux cardigan and hopefully that will be today, but that's probably not what's going to happen. The Soldotna has an issue with the neckline. The neckline in the picture 
is not the neckline in the pattern. And many people on Ravelry have already been complaining about this. Um, I don't know if you follow Amber from the Yarn Hoarder podcast. She had an Instagram story where she was just like so disappointed in the pattern that she decided to unravel her work and um, knit something else with that yarn. So I can un totally understand that when people see a picture and then see the um, start knitting the pattern and then you totally see that the neckline is not what you were expecting. And for some people, it's maybe it's a better neckline and they are, you know, not fussed about it. The problem is that it should be the same, right? It should be the same as the picture and the pattern. Should you you need to know what you're getting. I don't want to buy a pattern and then um, knit something and get something completely different. That's false advertising, I would say. I think this is a neckline, so it's not a big, big deal. Um, but I am glad that I figured this out before I started knitting this pattern. So... The thing that's happening is that the neckline is very what it's a wide scooped neck on the photos on the in the pattern it is just a ribbed um neckline and it's quite high up and then there's like a bunch of short row shaping in the neck which I usually like but for this pattern it might be not necessary my plan is to just make some sort of rolled neckline um or a very, very, very tiny ribbed neckline just to keep it together. Um, but I don't really know. So I'm thinking about casting it on um, on just some scrap yarn, um, start knitting the colour work yoke, and then later figuring out the neckline. It's going to be interesting, I think. It's an interesting project. Why would anybody willingly get into this fresh hell? I don't know, but yeah. We'll just see how this, I think this is going to be one of those, we'll just see how it goes projects and it'll probably work out fine. Um, but yeah, I was really excited about using this. Doesn't this look amazing together? I'm so excited. And then dropped flora, yes, not itchy, super soft, nice, love it. So I'll drop the crop and it's in my Halloween bag by Betty and Poppet, because I love her bags. Thank you so much for watching. And um, if you'd like to see more of my work, you can follow me on Instagram, which is at Braid and Tinker. If you want to follow me on Ravelry, it is Braid and Tinker. And um, that's it for now. Please like and subscribe. Like the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Um, do the bell thing where you get notified um, about new videos. And I hope to see you all again next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.